بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, now it's about 1 a.m. and this is Wednesday, 6th of February, sorry, 7th of February, Wednesday, 7th of February, and I am uh, recording this for you from Mashhad. I've been remembering uh, different groups in my Du'as and Ziyara, including the brothers and sisters of the Hose. And inshallah, you should be able to have it in time for the class today. Still, of course, you are on Tuesday, but you will have this for your Wednesday. Here it's already 1 a.m. Wednesday. The next rule that we have to discuss is qa'idatu al-maysur when we connect we say qa'idatu al-maysur al-maysur means something which is possible something which we can manage to do it's used in contrast to al-ma'sur something which has become not possible to do although osr means difficult but normally ma'sur is used for something which is not practical for uh, average people to do it yes it can become usro haraj it sure doesn't want us to go through if something is extraordinarily difficult that most of people would find it extremely difficult to do it then sure would not ask us to do it so qaida to al maysur is one of the important rules that our jurists use in fiqh in many places. For example, in the case of wudu, if I cannot wash one of the parts that I have to wash normally in wudu, what should I do? Shall I say that, okay, because one part of wudu cannot be washed, so now I have to go for tayammum, or I should do wudu without that part. Tayammum is when wudu is not possible at all. Not when part of it is not possible. Or the same is for example with salat. Sometimes one particular part of salat might be not possible to do. But I can do the rest. What should I do? These are examples. Of course, inshallah, we will explain later that for Salat in particular, we have uh, the Hadith which says as salatu la tutraku bihalin and with that we don't need Qadiyah al-Maysur we already have it in the case of Salat very clearly established but on the other hand you can say actually that's a kind of similar uh, uh, idea though it's for Salat specifically but it can give you a kind of understanding of the way uh, the legislator Shara looks at these issues. Sheikh Al A'zam, Sheikh Al Ansari, Rahmatullah Alai, in his Rasail, which is Al Fawad al Usul, or Farad al Usul, in his Rasail or Farad al Usul, he has a discussion about those wajibat which are. A combination of different parts and conditions which are also irtibati al aqal wal akthar al irtibati if you remember in usul we had this sometimes there are different parts but each part is independent for example in the months of ramadan we have to fast the whole month suppose 30 days but each day is separate if you don't do certain days and do the rest those days that you have fasted would be okay because each day is 
independently wanted although we are also supposed to bring the whole month but it's not one obligation it's analyzed into 30 obligations and each of them can be independently uh, obeyed but sometimes it's so connected that you have to bring the whole like salat you have ruku, you have sujood, you have qira'ah, you have qiyam, you have takbirat, all of them together. Now, if you have doubt whether salat with all the parts except one thing which is not known. Like for example, suppose jalsatul istara'ah should be sit after tashahud before standing up for the next rak'ah or it doesn't need. To be like that so if you know everything but you'd have doubt whether this is also needed or not so either everything with this which is akthar or everything without this which is akal which is less which one is necessary so this is called akalu akthar erstabati because all together make one whole body so shaykh ansari rahmatullah when he was discussing about akal akthar erstabati he has also addressed qaida to al he has used qaida to al -Maysur. In any case, you find in different places in fiqh a reference to this qaida. And what we will do, inshallah, uh, as has been our procedure, we would discuss first madhumun al qaida, what's the definition, the meaning of this rule, then madrak al qaida, what's the proof. Third, what's the relation between this qaida and al istishab It's very important because there might be cases that we can do istishab istishab of the remaining of wujub or istishab for juz'iyah, which will require two different things. If there can be istishab, then the author says there is no need for qadi al maysur Inshallah, we talk about it. And then we will talk about the relation between the rule and the references from which we understood the wajib. If those references, those adilla, are mutlaq, they are absolute, then what would happen to maysur would we also apply Maysur and which will uh, precede or we will not apply Al Maysur? So these are four issues Madhmun al Qaad, Madrak al Qaad, the relation between this Qaad and Istashab, and the relation between this Qaad and the Itlaqat that we have for the uh, Wajib or for Ajza. So let's start with Madhmun al Qaad. Whenever we have a murakkab, a compound, which is a combination of different parts and conditions, and one or more of them would be not possible to bring, the question is, shall we say, because we cannot bring those things which were important, and maybe the whole then would be not useful, should we say that then the wujub is dropped or we'd say there was a wujub and although we cannot bring the murakkab, the compound as was expected, but still we have to bring the rest because when you cannot do something 100% but you can do it 90%, so do it 90%. Don't say because I cannot do it completely, so I have to stop it completely. So this is Madhmun al qad And as I said, you have to remember something important about Salat. For Salat in particular, we know that something like this rule already is accepted by our Fuqaha. With Salat, everyone knows that if part of it is not possible, then you do the rest. And the reason is because we have a special rule for Salat 
لا تسقط الصلاة بحالة. We have this famous expression لا تترك الصلاة بحالة. Salat would never be uh, dropped or left. Of course, if uh, someone has no tahurain, faqidu tahurain, if someone cannot do wudu and tayammum, suppose someone has no wudu and is in uh, ocean or in a sea, and it's droning or swimming but there is nothing there to do tayammum on and it takes time to reach a place that can do tayammum or you are surrounded with snow and there is no earthy material so in this case maybe for Kahas and then say Faqatu uh, Tahurain would not say prayer but apart from that, it seems there is no other condition that Salat would be dropped. Salat should be uh, performed after it becomes obligatory and there are no uh, excuses or exceptions. After it becomes obligatory, someone who is not mature or someone, for example, is uh, mentally has a problem uh, or, for example, uh, women in their period it's not wajib. But if it is wajib, you cannot say, I don't do it because I cannot do it 100% with all the wajibat and all the conditions. So, salat is different and we have a special rule for this. For example, in the footnote, uh, there is a reference to Sahiha of Zurara that is about a lady who is uh, mustahaba, as condition of istihada and the hadith says thumma tusalli wa la tada' as salata ala hale she says her prayer and would not leave salat in any circumstances for in the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal as salatu imadu deenikum salat is the pillar of your faith so uh, you should not stop it unless really not possible or it's not wajib in certain cases so please <clears throat> remember whether we uh, agree or disagree about qa'idatu al-maysur as a general rule for salat we have a specific rule that we have to do whatever is possible now let's see what are the arguments what's the proof what's the madrak for this rule but before i mention the madrak something that you have to remember and we keep mentioning this is this rule of al maysur is about something which has ajza not something which has afrad or ahad we are talking about something that as a whole it's necessary it's obligatory and we cannot be part of it shall we bring the rest or not but if we have a wajib which belongs to different things in parallel like as I said fasting that every day is wajib but not in the way that it's dependent on bringing other days that's different that's not about qaida to al maysura you have to certainly bring any day which is possible so please remember this point now let's go on to the madrak to the proof for this qaida some people have said that actually we don't need any argument we don't need any proof it's self-evident it is badihi and for something which is badihi you don't argue it doesn't need any argument any proof why they believe it is badihi they say because this is something that uqala, all the rational people would tell you that for example if you have debt if you owe someone ten thousand pounds okay you have to give him ten thousand 
But suppose you cannot give him 10,000 pounds. You can give him 9,000 pounds. What should you do? If you cannot give him anything, really, honestly, if you cannot give him anything, okay, if you are, cannot give him anything, so it remains as your debt, but right now you cannot do anything. So it's not wajib on you to do anything except to work towards collecting money and giving that person back money but if you have eight thousand pounds not thousand pounds you cannot say because i don't have ten thousand pound i have to work and prepare the rest and then i give him all together the money no oh Allah say if you have 90 percent give the 90 percent and then ask for permission to take time and find the rest if you have 80 percent give the eight percent and take for uh, extension ask for an extension take extension if you have 70 percent the same anything that you have you have to give Okala would not say either you have to give 100 percent or it drops it's not like that they don't say it drops if you cannot give 100 percent so some people have tried to say all the wajibat is uh, are like debts we have debts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I cannot bring all parts of salat if I cannot bring all parts of Hajj all parts of for example fasting I bring that much that I can. But the author says it seems that this is a mistake. Because in the case of financial debts, as we said, it's like independent parts. If you have to give 10,000 pounds, every pound or even every penny by itself is uh, um, you know, useful. It's significant and you have to give it it's like fasting of 30 days that each day is important but suppose fasting of a day has many hours many minutes many seconds but they are not independently wajah so if you cannot for example fast uh, beginning but for example you can fast half of it Shall we say, okay, at least you do half of the salat, uh, sorry, half of the fasting, half of the siyam. Or we say, if you cannot do all of it, then you cannot do it. Of course, we have another issue that, for example, if I cannot uh, fast in the afternoon because I'm traveling, uh, then if my traveling starts before Zohr, I have to keep fasting till I reach Had the Tarakhos. If it is afternoon, Anyway, my fasting is okay. But suppose it's beginning. Someone in the beginning cannot fast, has to take uh, food or medicine, otherwise he would have big serious health issue. Then what should happen after that? You cannot say easily that every hour by itself is independent. Every minute is independent. The same thing that we say for days in the months of Ramadan, that if each day is independent, here we cannot say every hour or every minute or every second. So debt, financial debt is like this. Every pound by itself is important and is independently wajib to give back. But our question was about murakkab zu ajza, not something zu afrat, not kulli which has afrat. So we leave that claim of being badihi or self-evident aside and go to some hadith that have been mentioned. The first hadith which has been mentioned, which is very famous, uh, is a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam that is normally said in this way. La yutrakul maysur bil ma'asur la yutrakul maysur bil ma'asur what is possible would not be left because of what is not possible this is mashhur this is famous and people keep saying this but what we have actually in the text is uh, sorry what is actually in text is what i said la yutrakul maysur bil ma'asur if you go back to awal al-ali you find it in this way. But what is mashhur is Al Maysuro La Yasqutu Bil Ma'asur. This has become more famous. People, ulama, 
keep using this expression that al maysur la yasqut is not dropped bil ma'sur because of what is not possible something which is possible is not dropped but what is actually in awal al ali the exact text is la yutrakul maysur bil ma'sur okay we have to discuss two issues one is the dalala the meaning the indication the interpretation of this hadith the second it's sanad it's authentic authenticity and reliability of the chain of narrators with respect to interpretation there have been big discussion here some say this hadith refers to something which has different instances different afraad ahad not different ajza it's not about a cool a whole or compound which has different parts but all together they are one unit they said this hadith is not about that and the reason that they have mentioned to show that the hadith is not about cool is the word suqut al maysuru la yasqutu bil ma'sur lots of discussion is about this word la yasqut but before we say the idea of different ulama about this you have to remember that in the actual hadith which is in awal al ali we don't have la yasqut we have la yutrakul maysuru bil ma'sur so according to that version there is no problem this hadith if it is authentic it would include our case which is murakkab if it is authentic no problem in dalal what has the uh, the term la yasqut is not the hadith the actual hadith it's a result of hadith which has become famous which is very popular al maysur la yasqutu bil ma'sur we have also a poem in farsi which says ab darya ra agar natwan kashid ham be qadr tashnagi bayad chashid if you cannot take all the water from the sea at least you should take as much that you need for quenching your thirst ham be qadr tashnagi bayad chashid so there are many things that maybe we cannot finish the job but we cannot do that little that is possible uh, for example there are hungry people we cannot feed all of them but we can feed 10% 20% of them we should do it or someone has different needs i can only meet for example the need for treatment for health needs money for for example education other things but i can help with one part so i should do it so al maysur la yasqut bil ma'sur many ulama have said this la yasqut is actually a problem for those who want to use it for qaidi al maysur if you want to use it for something like feeding as i said something like fasting of different days something which has different individual or instances and each of them by itself is independent yes that's excellent but suqut stops using this for a kull and the reason is this please pay attention they say if suppose you can make a wudu except washing your face everything else you can do or 
doing mass wiping on your head. You can do everything else. They say that wujub which belong to the kul has gone. Because we cannot do the whole. Now the question is, is there any wujub for remaining parts or not? This wujub for the remaining part is not known to be there. So that now we say it's not dropped. Maybe it was never there. Maybe we had only wujub for the kul. Not for this new combination. Maybe only for that complete and comprehensive combination. That was wajib, but I cannot do it. So that's gone. This one that I can do it, I, I'm not sure that it has any any time become obligatory so that I say what is obligatory, uh, you have to keep it, you cannot do escort, you cannot drop it. You see, so the problem of suqut is something must be there and then if you have doubt whether it's dropped or not, you say it's not dropped. But we don't know whether wujub has been there for that smaller combination. So this has become a big issue. And some ulama therefore said this rule cannot be understood from Al-Maysur la yasqutu bil masur Some people like uh, Ayatollah Khoui have mentioned this problem. Some people like Sheikh Naraqi have, has mentioned this problem. But the late Sheikh Hansari has a way to deal with this problem. And he says, although technically, if you are very, very you know, careful and very focused, yes, you realize that the wujub for the smaller or the lesser combination is never known so we cannot say it would not drop because not known to be there something must be there then you say drops or doesn't drop but Sheikh Ansari says these very specific precise distinctions are not something that normal people would understand what in Sharia we need normally is what ordinary people, average people can understand. And based on average people, they say wujub is there. They say, you know, salat with nine parts uh, is wajib. Although it was wajib part of, as part of ten, combination of ten. But this is wajib. And I don't know, shall I keep it? or it drops. So Sheikh Ansari says, yes, ulama make this distinction and they say there was a wajib for these nine parts as part of the kul which has dropped already because we cannot bring kul. And then whether there is wajib for these nine parts only is never proved. So this is the way ulama and people who are very much trained can understand and make distinction or say it was wajib and I don't know whether it is still possible or not still wajib or not I should bring it some people have said we are not sure that this hadith is for those things which have ahad or afrad which have individuals maybe it's for them Maybe it's also including those things which have parts, but even ihtimal is a problem. So the first objection was that we are sure that la yasqut would not include murakkab which has ajza. These people are saying we are not sure, but even if you are not sure, just the possibility of having another interpretation is a stopping argument but as we said we don't have doubt we are sure that it includes 
because first of all in the hadith there is no laya suqut and even if there is suqut according to Sheikh Ansari it still would be uh, included because of Allah say this is the same wujub they don't say wujub nafsi has gone for the call and this wujub zimni for part as part of that call has gone and then the question is whether these nine have wujub and nafsi they are by themselves uh, desired and wanted by sha'ara or not normal people do not make this distinction they say these nine parts had wujub even if it was zimni partial and now still we have to keep it and don't drop it sheikh irwani tries to find another solution he says maybe we can say that this namaz this salat as example suppose we are using it for salat although salat doesn't need this hajj whatever this salat that he mentions which was supposed to be initially with 10 parts now one part is missing can we say this salat with the 10 parts or nine parts salat okala is still with nine parts they call it salat they say this salat was wajib and now one part is not possible but this salat is still wajib it seems this is possible of course uh, not too many parts should become impossible if you miss too many parts for example out of 10 you can only do one or two or three parts they may not call it salat but as long as it's possible to be called salat it's called umrah it's called fasting then we may be able to say that it was wajib and now because of some part not being available still we have to consider it as wajib of course this as i said can only be said if you can bring most of the parts to the extent that the identity is remaining plus this is after the time of salat comes if it is 11 o'clock uh, for example you uh, still have no taklif because the midday has not come and then from the beginning of midday you cannot do the salat with 10 parts you cannot say salat was wajib because we don't know salat was wajib unless of course we used qaida but i'm saying without qaida you cannot say salat was wajib now i cannot bring one so still it's wajib no if salat was possible after the time of salat came and that wujub becomes effective it's in effect then if one part is not possible to be done two parts we may say that wujub is remaining but if before wujub is fixed the part becomes impossible then we cannot say wujub was there and we doubt and we have to assume that it is still there the next issue as i said is sanat Sanad, we have a problem because this hadith is only mentioned as far as we know in awal al-la'ali and in awal al-la'ali it's mentioned from amir al mu'minin but as mursal we don't have the complete chain of narrator it says amir al mu'minin said this so it's not hujja and we don't have it before awal al ali with you know sanad whatever so we have to rely on awali but it is more sal there some people have tried to say okay this weakness can be uh, compensated by this being mashhur among our scholars because many of our scholars have accepted this idea and have issued fatwas based on this so that famousness would supplement the weakness of the chain but the answer is shuhura fame 
reputation if it's proved to exist among mutaqaddimin of ulama then that's good because they were close to the time of ma'asum and if one hadith that for us it's mursal or it's za'if we are not able to verify it but if those who were very close to the time of ma'asum they relied on it and acted based on that and issued fatwa based on that for us it's good it can be compensating and supporting the hadith but if it is mutaakhirin who have this famous hadith then that's the problem and unfortunately in this case we don't find this among mutaqaddimin we don't find for example shuhra about this idea with Kulaini, with Sadu, with Sheikh Tusi. The first person that we know who has mentioned this is the author of Awal al Ali, and that's Ibn Abi Jumhur al Ahsa'i, who was in the 9th century and even after Allami Hilli. Okay, so we have a problem with the chain. The second hadith is a hadith from Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ida amartukum bishayin fa'atu anhum astata'atum When I ask you, command you to do something, bring it as much as you can. If you cannot bring it 100%, if you cannot bring it all the time, bring it as much as you can. And also there is another hadith, the third hadith from Amir al again. Ma la yudraku kulluh, la yudraku kulluh. So the first was from Amir al the second from Rasulullah, the third, again from Amir al Mumini alayhi salam, Ma la yudraku kulluh, la yudraku kulluh. What cannot be um, reached 100% means you cannot witness it, you cannot reach, you cannot have it 100%. Then you don't drop it altogether. La yudraku kulluh. If you cannot have 100%, don't leave all of it so that you have only zero. So, this second hadith from Rasulullah and the third, again, they are in Awal al Ali. And the same problem of Ersal is there. And also, we don't have Shuhra among Mutaqattamin. So, because Sanad is a problem, then the author says we don't need to discuss the Dalala. And with the first one, we discuss also Dalala because. Uh, the this concept of suqut was very controversial let's go to the third part of this session about istishab can we do istishab can we say these nine parts were wajib before because when 10 was possible a combination of 10 was possible so these nine were wajib and now we do istishab the answer is this type of istishab is not acceptable. This is the third part of istishabul kulli. The third part. For example, a person was in the room. Zaid was in the room. When Zaid was in the room, we, can, we could say Ensan was in the room. You can say Zaid was in the room or a human being was in the room. Then Zaid left. You know that Zaid has left. We don't know whether Amr is there or not. We cannot do a stashab of Amr because Amr is not known to be there before. We cannot do a sashab of Zaid because Zaid has already left. So you know that has gone. But some people have tried to say we can do a kind of sashab. And to say there was a human being and now we don't know if there is any human being or not. We do a sashab. So we say there is a human being. But the human being which was there was in Zaid, humanity in Zaid. The human being that we have doubt is not humanity in Zaid because that has gone. Humanity in Amr. So I cannot do a sashab of Zaid, I cannot do a sashab of Amr, but I can do a sashab of 
having a human being in the room. But this type of istisab kulli is not acceptable. Why? Because that humanity which was in Zayd has gone. We don't have something as humanity which would be independent from individuals. When Zayd is not there, that's gone. If Am comes, it has another humanity with it. But these are not the same. Because there are lots of discussions about what's the relation between Kulliya Tabi'i and Ahad. What is the relation between humanity and Zayd Amran Bakr? He say each person comes with its own humanity and each person goes with its humanity. There's nothing independent that we can say, okay, the person has gone, but humanity remains. So Estesav also cannot help us here. And as I said also, in any case, it has to be after, even if someone wants to do Estesa or whatever, it has to be after Wujub has become applicable. So after the time of Salat, for example, has come, not before that, because before that, at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, we don't have Wujub for Salat as well. The last part of the discussion, we have some adilla, some sources, some references that say this is wajib and these are the parts so you have adilla for the salat hajj fasting or wajib or mustahab because this issue can come also in a mustahab that you cannot bring all the parts so you have adilla which says these are wajib or mustahab and you have also adilla which says these parts are needed so What's the relation between these Adilla and Qadi al maisu If these Adilla are silent, they have no umum or itlaq, there is no generality. We just know that this is wajib, but whether it is wajib all the time or not, we don't know. Or this is juz, whether it is juz all the time or it is juz when it is practical, we don't know. Okay, if you don't know, you do Qadi al maisur But if you know that there is itlaq in wujub al salah, it says do salat with itlaq, whether you can bring all the parts or not, then you have to do salat. Like salatullah to trakul hal, and even it is more than itlaq. But even if it is itlaq, so Sheikh Irwani says that itlaq. It makes us free from need for Qadi al Maisur. Wujub is there in all circumstances, including when you cannot bring all the parts. So you go by the itlaq of Umum Wujub al Salat. Or if there is Umum in Juz'iyah, it says this is Juz Ruku, for example, it's Juz, whether you can bring it or you cannot bring it. It's Juz. It means without this, Salat is a problem. So he says, if there is etlaq for wujub or for juz, we don't use qadi al maisur because that etlaq says, even when it's not possible 100%, you have to do it. Or even if it is not 100% possible, it's a still juz. So it means it drops. Qadi al maisur is when there is no etlaq. But I think. Qadi al Maisur, if we accept it, would override Etlaq. Because Etlaq is always there, but Qadi al Maisur is more specific and Khas is normally given preference over Am. Otherwise, there would be no case for Qadi al Maisur. There's always a kind of Etlaq. So, I think here we may disagree with Sheikh Irwani and we may say if it is mentioned as specifically as umum like as salatu la tutraka bihal we don't need al maisur whether it says specifically that all the parts have to be there and without them there is no wujub or it says you don't need to have all the parts even without all the parts you can do it if it is mentioned as umum as specifically 
with some evidence, some linguistic indicators, then we go by it. We don't have Qadi al Masu. But if it is a Tlaq, a Tlaq is not able to stand against Qadi al Masu, which is more specific. Okay, so we stop here. We finished. And inshallah, the next session would be Qa'idatu Alaliyad. Alaliyad ma akhavat hatta tu adi. When someone takes something, say as a trust, for example, as a loan, he's responsible to make sure that would be given back to the person who has given him this as a loan or amana. Of course, there are details, and inshallah, we'll discuss it in the next session. Wa akhru da'wana, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.